Hello and welcome back to the Crime Reel. For today's true crime narration, we shall be looking at a brutal attack that took place at the Lululemon store in Bethesda, just outside of Washington, D.C. Lululemon is an upmarket yoga and athletic clothing store, and this branch was situated on Bethesda Row in Maryland, a high-end shopping and dining district about eight miles from Washington, D.C. On the 12th of March, 2011, Rachel Ertley, the store manager, headed to work arriving shortly before 8am. Rachel immediately noticed that something was very wrong. The door of the shop was unlocked and the store was in complete disarray. Clothes were strewn over the floor, tables and mannequins upended, and the television smashed. More alarmingly, she saw multiple bloody footprints and could hear a moaning noise coming from the bathroom, which was towards the back of the store. She immediately walked back outside and called the police. Next door was an Apple shop, where a queue had started to form for the latest iPad release. Rachel spoke to a man by the name of Ryan Hoare, who was waiting in the queue and he agreed to accompany her back into her store. Ryan headed towards the office at the back where he saw a body lying face down in a pool of blood. He rushed back towards Rachel and saw a second person on the bathroom floor. This person was tied up but still breathing. He told Rachel that it appeared that one person was dead and another was alive with both appearing to have been sexually assaulted. The emergency services were called for a second time and they arrived shortly afterwards. The scene that greeted them was nothing short of horrific. 30-year-old Jaina Murray had been brutally beaten to death. Jaina was a sales team leader at Lululemon, who was well-loved by those who knew her. She was a fun-loving, dynamic young woman who was near to completing her Masters of Business Administration at the John Hopkins University at the time of her death. She loved travelling, dancing and regularly completed volunteer work. 28-year-old Brittany Norwood was a sales assistant at the store. She was found with her hands and legs zip-tied together with cuts to her face, chest, legs, arms and abdomen. Brittany was from a large family and years earlier had been part of the Washington State Championship winning football team, the FC Royals. Her coach there described her as a great kid who could run like the wind. She attended Stony Brook University, where she studied sociology and played football and was described as a funny and sweet girl. Brittany was breathing but traumatised. She was placed on a stretcher and taken to Suburban Hospital in Bethesda for treatment. Initially, she would not open her eyes or talk to anyone and would flinch whenever someone came near her. Both the women's yoga pants had been split in the crutch area, leading to the assumption that they had been sexually assaulted. Later that day, Detective Deanna Mackey of the Montgomery County Police Department visited Brittany at the hospital and spoke to her about the attack. Brittany told the detective that she and Jaina had returned to the store the previous evening and had been followed inside by two men who were wearing masks and gloves. She went on to describe the attack in significant detail, stating how she had been sexually assaulted with a clothes hanger. The attack shocked the local community who struggled with such a random and brutal attack being committed in what was seen as a safe area. It was believed that what started out as a robbery had taken a devastating turn and rewards were offered for information leading to the arrest of the two men responsible. There was $125,000 from Lululemon, $10,000 from Federal Realty in Bethesda and an additional $1,000 from Crime Stoppers. A follow-up interview was arranged with Brittany at her home on the 14th of March. Two detectives attended in the hope that Brittany may have remembered additional details that could help them with their inquiries. Detective Dimitri Ruvin and Detective James Drury asked Brittany to recount what had happened on the evening of 11th of March through to the morning of 12th of March. Brittany told them how Jaina had been attacked by one man and she by another. 
She said that the man who attacked her was of medium build and around 5 foot 5 inches tall. He was wearing black clothing, a ski mask and gloves, and that, based on his voice, she believed him to be in his mid-twenties and Caucasian. She described Jaina's attacker as approximately 6 foot with an average build. Again, he was wearing black clothing, mask and gloves, and she believed that he was also Caucasian. Brittany told the detectives that the assailants knew where she lived, presumably due to letters that she had in her handbag, and that they had allowed her to live because she was fun to have sex with. However, after this meeting on the 14th of March, the police's perception of Brittany as a victim of this terrible assault began to change. As more evidence emerged, Brittany was being considered as a suspect rather than a victim. On the 16th of March, Brittany was called in to provide what was thought to be elimination fingerprints and hair samples. She was interviewed once again, and when asked what type of car Jaina drove, Brittany replied that she did not know. However, the following morning, Brittany's brother and sister contacted the detectives to revise this information. They stated that Brittany had been withholding facts because she was afraid that the suspects would harm her. She did in fact know what car Jaina drove because her attackers had made her move it. After six days of investigation, it had been established that neither of the women had been sexually assaulted and the forensic evidence pointed to it having been Brittany who had killed Jaina. An additional interview was arranged for the 18th of March, during which Brittany attempted to explain about the car. She stated that her attackers, prior to sexually assaulting her, had made her move Jaina's car to a different car park. She said that they told her that they would be watching her the entire time and would kill her if she talked to anyone. Brittany went to move Jaina's car, alone, and even when she saw a police officer in a patrol vehicle, made no attempt to flag them down, claiming that she was too afraid. When asked why she returned to the shop instead of driving away, she said that it was because she was afraid for her life. The attackers knew where she lived, and she was scared they would come after her. Every time Brittany explained more of what had happened to the police, more inconsistencies in her story began to appear. Brittany was placed under arrest and charged with first-degree murder. Through their investigation, the detectives found that Jaina and Brittany had had an argument on the day of the attack. During a bag check, Jaina had found some yoga leggings in Brittany's bag, which she believed that Brittany had stolen. The two women left the store at approximately 9.45pm and Jaina called her manager to report the problem with the bag check a few minutes later. At around the same time, Brittany called a fellow sales associate, Isla Rabb, explaining that she had left her purse in the store. Brittany asked Isla for Jaina's telephone number so that she could arrange to meet Jaina back at the store and retrieve her purse. Isla sent a text to Brittany with Jaina's number shortly afterwards. Jaina and Brittany re-entered the store at about 10.05pm. At 10.30pm, employees at the adjacent Apple store heard two female voices shouting and arguing. They did not hear any male voices. When the forensic examinations were completed, it was established that there were only two sets of bloody footprints in the store, one belonging to Brittany and the other to a pair of size 14 shoes that belonged to the store and were found at the crime scene. They believed that Brittany walked through the store in these shoes in order to fabricate evidence to back up her story. The disparity between the level of injuries sustained by the two women was also investigated. Brittany had been found with minor scratches and wounds that could easily have been self-inflicted, and her hands and feet were bound in such a way that she could easily have done this herself. Meanwhile, Jaina had been killed in a brutal attack that they believe lasted up to 20 minutes. She had sustained so many blows that it was initially impossible to determine the exact number of wounds. It was later reported that she had at least 331 wounds on her body, including 107 defensive wounds. A trail of blood showed that she had tried to escape through the back door of the shop and indicated that she had been alive for the duration of the brutal attack. It is believed that one of the final blows, a stab wound on the back of her neck that severed her spinal cord, was ultimately the fatal blow. At least six different murder weapons were retrieved from the scene, including a hammer, knife, 
and a wrench. The police believe that after killing Jaina, Brittany went and sat in Jaina's car for around 90 minutes, during which time she came up with her plan to try to cover up the horrendous crime scene. When news of Brittany's arrest broke, many of her friends were stunned that she could have been responsible for such a violent attack. Brittany did not have a criminal record, although past acquaintances said that she had a reputation for being a petty thief. During her first court appearance on the 21st of March, Brittany remained expressionless throughout. Montgomery County State's attorney, John McCarthy, stated that her cunning and her ability to lie is almost unparalleled. By the time the case went to trial in October 2011, the defence did not deny the fact that Brittany had killed Jaina. The six men and six women of the jury were tasked with determining whether the act was premeditated and therefore first degree murder, which was punishable by life in prison, possibly without parole, or second degree murder, which would receive a lesser term. The prosecution declared that they had an abundance of evidence to show that the attack was premeditated, particularly the fact that Brittany had lured Jaina back to the store after closing and had then invented an elaborate story in an attempt to pass the blame for her crimes. The defence countered this by saying Brittany had snapped during an argument and had then spun a web of delusional lies and as a result this was a case of second degree murder. The jury deliberated for just over an hour before returning a verdict. Brittany was found guilty of first degree murder. She remained expressionless as the verdict was read. In January 2012, Brittany was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The judge stated that her crime exemplified the worst of human nature and rejected the idea that she could be rehabilitated describing her as cold-blooded, brutal, calculated, deliberate, devious and malicious. Brittany choked back tears as she apologised to both her own and Jaina's families. By 2015, all of her appeal options have been exhausted and she remains incarcerated at the Maryland Correctional Institution for Women. Meanwhile, Jaina's family have created the Jaina Troxell Murray Foundation which is dedicated to remembering the life of this vibrant young woman and also assisting and enriching the lives of others by enabling them to enjoy the interests that Jaina herself enjoyed. That concludes today's case. My thanks to Steph Carlo for suggesting covering this one. Thanks as always Steph for suggesting another intriguing case. Please click like and comment down below and if you're new to the channel I'd be really grateful if you would take time to subscribe. Later this week I'm moving house so I'll be taking a couple of weeks off and I'll be back as soon as I can. This will give you a chance to catch up on some of my older videos. Thanks very much for listening to the crime reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst. A few years ago, Lululemon moved a few doors away from their original store and the company had a stained glass window put in as a tribute to Jaina. The end panel clearly leaves the message of love. Goodbye.